I'm going to go ahead and lock down my set screws. And if you can get three set screws on your tool, but that's better. Minimum of two. Okay, so now I've got my tool height and the orientation of the tool bit set properly. What I'm now, now what I want to check is my travel. Okay, I can go back to there without hitting the tailstock. So I got plenty of travel that way, and I've got plenty of travel that way. I'm going to go right into my groove that I made. That's where I'll stop it. I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer and make sure that I can get right, almost right up to the tip of that live center without the side of this hitting the live center. Okay. So now I can lock this down. I'm going to lock my tailstock. You know, this part of it's important. This is my spindle lock. And I want each of you to feel that because that's important. What's going to happen, uh, let's say you are turning a part between centers and the part heats up a little bit. Well, it's going to push this live center back. It could even possibly push the tailstock back to the point where that bearing doesn't turn anymore on the live center. Mm -hmm. Okay, And then this will get real floppy. But that's about the tension you want on a lathe dog. So you might want to check that out. And it's not sloppy, but you can feel the tension in there. Just enough. Yeah, it holds itself. <laughs> okay. Then what I would do is put it up against that jaw because that's the jaw that's going to drive it. The chuck is going to turn this way. Remember, when you're cutting, the part's always going over the top of your tool. Okay. The other benefit to using a lathe dog is that if I take and mark this jaw and the tip of my lathe dog with die chem or that fluid you use to mark, steel with, I can take this out and put it back in and cut again without doing anything. It'll orient itself perfectly for another cut on those threads. So if I wanted to take this out and actually measure the threads, mm -hmm. I would mark it there. Now if I change jaws, then you'd end up with a double or a triple thread. You didn't, you wouldn't you're marking it on the, the jaw? Yep. Okay. yep. Or you could use a sharpie or something. Something that would mark. Know what jaw it was sitting on? Yep. Okay. So yep. my question is, can you take a measurement while the part's still inside? Uh, yes. The center line yes. And that's a good question. You can you can take measurements on the threads while it's still in here. It's quite a bit easier to take it out and measure it. But uh, if you have the the three wire method that you're using. It's going to take somebody holding the wires, standing where Ryan is, mm -hmm. and somebody else to measure it with a micrometer. Okay, and you want that nice slip fit over those wires. Now a pitch mic I can fit right in here. And a Miko gauge I could do the same thing too. It's just easier to get it out of the chuck and get it away from all this. And there's going to be oil and mm -hmm. things like that that you don't want to contaminate any of the measuring equipment. Okay, so I've got that set. Now, this is something that's not on your papers, uh, and it's something you won't see in many books. It's a little trick. The first thing I'm going to do is get my dials going in clockwise. Okay, I'm going to set the compound rest to zero. And right on zero. Then I'm going to take my crossfeed dial and loosen it up so I can move the dial. And I'm going to bring it in and touch my part. And I'm just touching it, just felt it. Ooh, ended up on zero. Got lucky. You set this to zero. Now they're both on zero, yes. You can put paper in between. 
paper's 4,000 thick, uh, so you got to remember that. But you're still going, nonetheless, you're still going to measure the threads anyway. So even though you've lost that 4,000, so you'll still be measuring. Okay. Now, what I want to do is get it off the part. Okay. Now I'll set up the lathe to cut threads. So I look at my gearbox and I look at my chart over here. And I've already got it set up, but I'll show you how this works. I've got a chart that says ABC in one column with an E after it. And then I have an ABC and an F after it. So there's two different blocks of information. Um, that one you can look at it there and follow along as well. It's the same identical chart. Okay, I find the number 13. 13 threads per inch. And this is where you're using the large numbers. The other one doesn't have that. Not the small ones. So I find 13. That happens to be in the second column. All right? This is how you set your column. No, these are different charts. Okay? Now, if it won't go in there, it happens hmm? to go in. You just put your chuck in neutral. I think it's easier to cover until you can get it to go in. The other one where 13 is, is B, and B is down here. That's your gear lever. You've got A, B, C. B is right up in the center. And the other one, it's in the E category. So this is E. E goes that way. That's F, that's E. Now, it's, there's a plate right here that says, do not use it at E with spindle speeds above 300. And that has to do with the gearing in the machine. It puts a strain on the gears. You don't want to do that. Cool. So always pay attention to any placards that you see on these machines. This one sits on the second one. Yep. It's in the second column. Yep. Okay. Now what I want to do is make sure that I'm feeding in the right direction. I want to <coughs> feed it from the right to left. For you guys over there, it would be from left to right, okay? So I'm going to turn the lathe on. What RPM you set at right now? The RPM I'm using is 256, and I don't expect you guys to run the threads at that speed. You'll see why in a second. Uh, you can run them as slow as you want. What you, I'm going to shut this off while I'm talking. But is, what you have to remember is the feed rate corresponds to 13 threads per inch. Mm -hmm. So it's going to go so pretty gonna fast. it's going to keep up with that as yeah. it travels. It goes very, very fast. Uh, so that would be about mm -hmm. 76,000, 79 thousandths per revolution. One over 13. Okay. So at 256, it's going pretty quick. On a CNC machine, we run threads probably right around 500, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 RPM. So it's very, very rapid. You don't even see the threads being cut. Okay. Uh, while it's running, we take some die counts. my part up. This dries quite rapidly. Now to check my feet out, I don't want to do it yet. There's one last thing I have to do. A couple of things. Okay, this is called the half nut. We use this for threading. That half nut, or the gear that's inside here, has to mate with the lead screw. So we have a feed rod and a lead screw. Right. Feed rod's on top. So what I'm going to do is put it in place. See how that swivels? Now the reason we move it out of, the, out of place is because it's a brass gear in a lot of cases. And we don't want wear happening to that little gear. See, I'm turning that with my finger. Okay, that's what's gonna allow me to go 13 threads per inch. So I'm gonna set it in there and push on it and I'm gonna 
move my carriage just slightly so it pops in. So now I know the gears are mated. See now I'm turning that? Okay, now I'm going to lock that in position. <coughs> now when I turn the lathe on, that should be turning. Nope, it's not. And here's the reason. You see this collar right here? Oh, the collar, yeah. Okay, 